This video is about the introduction to sets. We will describe a well-defined set, and all other related terms such as subset, universal set, null set, and cardinality of set. We will show how to write a set, differentiate a finite set from an infinite set, and show how to use Venn diagrams to represent sets and subsets. Finally, we'll explain why we need to study sets. Before we proceed, we'll first review the types of numbers. The types of numbers are natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. Natural numbers include all the positive integers from 1 to infinity. It is used for counting purposes. Whole numbers include 0 and all natural numbers. Integers include whole numbers and negative numbers. Rational numbers include all integers, fractions, and decimals. Now let us check your knowledge. What type of number is 8? It is natural, and therefore, it is a whole number, an integer, and rational. What about negative 6? It is integer and rational. What about 0? It is a whole number so it is also an integer and rational. What about 2.3? It's rational. To start our main topic, let me show examples and non-examples of sets. On the left, we have the set of primary colors. We have a set of all natural numbers less than 10. Lastly, we have the set of vowels in the English alphabet. On the right, we have the set of the greatest basketball players in the world. Next, we have the set of beautiful actresses in the Philippines. Lastly, the set of the best restaurants in Metro Manila. We know that the primary colors are blue, red, and yellow. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are the natural numbers that are less than 10. The vowels in the English alphabet are A, E, I, O, U. On the right, can you name all of them? What is best, beautiful, and great for you may be the same or most likely be different to others. Because these terms are subjective. These groups on the right are non-examples. The groups on the left are examples because we can clearly determine the members or what is included. In mathematics, a set is a well-defined collection of objects known as elements that share a common characteristic. What differentiates a set from any group is that a set is well-defined. An element can be almost anything, such as numbers, functions, or lines. You can think of it as a box with things inside. The box is the set, and the things are the elements. Let us continue to the notation and symbols that are used in writing sets. Uppercase letters are used to name sets and lowercase letters are usually used to refer to any element of a set. The elements are separated by comma. This method of writing sets is called roster method. If the list is too long and there is a pattern to the elements, we write down enough members so that the pattern is clear. Then, we put ellipses to show the continuing pattern. Look at these examples. Set N contains all natural numbers. Set W is the set of all whole numbers. Set Z is the set of all integers. We use ellipses on both sides to show that the list goes to negative and positive infinity. When there are an infinite number of elements, we use ellipses or the three dots at the end. This is an example of an infinite set. Set n is the set of natural numbers so it starts from 1, 2, 3 and it goes forever. There is no limit. We can also use ellipses in the middle when the list is too long but we know the limit. We call this set a finite set. Set h is the set of natural numbers from 1 to 100. Another way of writing a set is called the rule method. We read this as set A contains the element of X such that X is a primary color. 
Set B contains the element of x such that x is greater than 0 but less than 10. Now let us discuss the subset, universal set and the null set. Let us use set U as an example. Set U is the set of all natural numbers from 1 to 20. What are the elements? Another set is F which contains even numbers from 1 to 20. Can you name the members of this set? How about the set of prime numbers that are less than 20? Obviously, these are well-defined sets since we can clearly identify their elements. Even number is a number that is divisible by 2. A prime number is a whole number greater than 1 with only two factors, 1 and itself. Notice that all elements of set F and set P are also found in set U. It means that set F and set P are subsets while set U is a universal set. A set is a subset if all of its elements are part of another set. It can be written like this. F is a subset of U. And P is a subset of U. We can also say that set U contains the set F. And set U contains the set P. A universal set is a set which contains all the elements or objects of other sets, including its own elements. In this case, set U is a universal set since it has all the elements present in other sets, which are set F and set P, plus it has its own elements which are 1, 9, and 15. Can you name the elements of a set which contain natural numbers less than 1? It is impossible, because we learned from the types of numbers that natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, and so on. All natural numbers are greater than 0 and are used for counting purposes. Therefore, this set has no elements. When a set has no elements, it is known as null set. It is represented like this. Curly braces with no elements or a slashed zero. Cardinality is the number of elements contained in a set. It is denoted by vertical bars. The cardinality of set U is 20, set F is 10, and set P is 8. A Venn diagram uses circles or other shapes within an enclosing rectangle to show the logical relationships between sets and subsets. The rectangle represents set U, since it is the universal set in this given example. The two circles are inside the rectangle since they are subsets. The circles overlap since there is a common element between set F and set P. We'll discuss more on intersecting sets in the next video. Here is another example. The universal set R is the set of colors of the rainbow. Set P is the set of primary colors, and as you can see, it is a subset of set R. Set S is the set of secondary colors, which is also a subset of set R. Why do we need to study sets? Sets are the fundamental property of mathematics. Set theory examines whether an object belongs or does not belong to a set of objects which has been described in some non-ambiguous way. We often classify objects, people, or ideas according to common shared properties, which make it easier for us to talk about things in general without having to repeat individual instances over and over. If you learned from this video, please hit the like button. The next related topic is the union and intersection of sets. Please comment below for questions or suggestions. Thank you for watching. Okay.